Hi, my name is Richard Pennycook and welcome to Export Kit. In this example, we'll be demonstrating using CSS3 along with HTML outputs to basically render and manipulate Bootstrap 3 elements. Now, with Export Kit, we have a very powerful CSS engine, so this allows you to manipulate any CSS framework. Uh, Bootstrap is just an example. So if we take a look at our PSD file, and we're going to include this online. This was not originally included with our sample file. What you'll see is that we have a custom button that we've created and if we take a look at the actual layers you'll see that we've applied a style button and we also have a label and a background so you'll note these here also if we look at our styles to reflect these you'll see that we have our basic button let's just slide this over this is going to be a blue shape basically a square or actually a round rectangle in our case and we have a hover state and we also have an active state uh, with a short gradient at the top we can take a look at this in the effects and you'll see that we have a gradient overlay and it's just mapped uh, slightly about 90 percent so we also have a label element and again this is in uh, our actual uh, button itself these are our styles that what this will do is reflect in the output uh, basically how the CSS will control these elements you can see in our a in our HTML or our actual Photoshop file that we're using basic elements so this is just a round rectangle shape and this is just a basic text layer now for our styles it will reflect all the elements of the actual style so if we were to change the font here uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's make this. Uh, let's make Lucidia Sans. What this will do in the output is actually change the label font to reflect that. Now you'll see beside this we do have a couple bootstrap buttons, and these will basically denote how we can change the styles of Bootstrap um, in various ways. So you'll see that we have our first uh, primary button. Um, this will actually reflect the style of the actual button. You'll see that what we're using for the folder is button primary. So this will be reflective of the actual bootstrap classes. Now you can denote this easily with our style tag along with putting multiple styles um, on an actual layer. So what we can have here is we'll have our raw style. What the raw will do is because our label is not reflecting a style it will actually use the label elements um, so right here we have a black text and it's centered and it will actually use that in the output now we also have inline styles and if we select this you'll see that we've also added a style label to our actual label element what this will do in the danger button and you can see this reflective in the actual folder again this will reflect the label style that we've denoted in our CSS style so you can see this here so this will take the font and the size and the coloring of this label. Now we also have another which is our custom uh, styling. What we've done here is we've denoted label to the actual style and sorry let's just go back to danger really quick. You'll see that we also have button. Um, button is reflective of this actual uh, context so what this will do is this will use this actual element style. Now we also have another label which is in button success and we can take a look at this here and let's just go up this class is actually using button success so in our style and if we were to take a look at this also you'll see that our label element is within our button success folder so this will basically allow us to take over any CSS styling um, and in this case we're using a uh, bootstrap so what we've done is we've applied a hover state and an active state also to the label of our success button so basically anywhere that we use button success will denote these styles now we also have support that if you're drawing bootstrap directly on your Photoshop file what you can do is you can actually use text elements the text elements will render as is is um, denoted by bootstrap itself and you'll see this in the output so if we go ahead and we export this uh, we don't have any CSS images let's turn on dynamic height now the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna have to actually add uh, basically the bootstrap link so if we go to bootstrap itself Sorry, I'm just doing this in another window just to make it fast. So what I've done is I went to Bootstrap and I just copied their CDN link. This will give us uh, basically the Bootstrap CSS. So if we export this, once our export is complete, we can take a look at the output. And for this example, we're going to actually take a look at it in Google and in Firefox, uh, just so you can note some quick differences. So this is our Google browser, and you'll see that this is our Bootstrap theme. Now. 
From our PSD, you'll note again that we just use basic shapes and elements to create each of these objects. So in our custom button, you'll see that the class that we used was button and we used a label and a BG. So here our shapes are BG and what we did was we basically denoted our shapes uh, for each state, so for our hover and our active state, and we also gave the label a default color. So in our output, if we take a look, you'll see that our label color never changes, but as we hover, it will change color, and if we actually press, it will turn to the active state and give the gradient at the top. Now, we also created a few uh, basic uh, bootstrap buttons. So if we take a look at our PSD again, these are our first shapes. Um, bootstrap itself will not maintain uh, basically the rounded corners on the shapes. It does the rounding itself. Now, you'll see with our raw again how it created the actual output. What it did was it maintained the text color and the font that we created on our layer. Now, with our inline style, you'll see that it used our actual label uh, rendering so you'll see here it's the exact same label font um, but what happens is that bootstrap itself will place its label in a specific position it's not really centered so what will happen is that this will start where the label is expected to start but it will maintain the size and the actual uh, font that we created in our style so this is why it's actually set in the corner so you can actually override this yourself manually or you can live with the button style now we also have our success button our success we created with three states You'll see that when we actually press it, it gives our drop shadow, which we created in our Photoshop file. So if we look at the styles that we created for our button success, and this is a pure bootstrap element, what we did was we basically took over the label element for the default, and then this is the hover state and the active state. So we go ahead and we take a look at the output again. You'll see that when we hover, it'll change to yellow, and when we press, it will actually uh, give the drop shadow on the text as well. So you'll see that we can take over any individual bootstrap element using Export Kit CSS Engine. Now, we also did create a couple text elements in our Photoshop file, and let's take a look at them again. If we look at the actual paragraph styles, and we are using paragraph text in this, if we were to use label text, um, it would do the same where it would just actually measure the area of the actual text itself. So right here, we have a size for our large button, and you can see this here. Um, this is button large, and we're using a warning. Now for our default, it's slightly smaller, and this is our button default. And for our extra small, we're using a button excess, and this is a button info. So in our output, we actually get these elements created using the text uh, for the label that we denoted in our Photoshop file. So you'll see that using Export Kit, you can easily take over the styles of any CSS framework or create your own actually very quickly and easily using your own styles from your Photoshop design. Now, if we open this in Firefox, let's just take a look at it. You'll see that Firefox will behave the same. It will do the gradient uh, that we denoted in our PSD. And it actually treats each style differently. The only key difference that I wanted to point out between Firefox and Google is the font rendering. And you can tell, uh, basically using the large default and the extra small, how the fonts are rendered compared to Chrome itself. You'll see there are slight differences. So this is just a note depending on the browser, uh, how your output might look.